Great. Um, first of all, thank you all for, com for coming. Uh, thank you, uh, Philip, for uh, providing uh, us with some beers. And uh, yeah, we will talk about some Next.js stuff today. Uh, actually, how many of you uh, used or are using Next.js? Yeah. Great. Um, I won't talk uh, about the actual idea of, of Next.js. I will, I will talk actually about the new stuff that Next.js introduced uh, with uh, the new server side, uh, server side uh, components, some um, uh, streaming, etc. Next.js uh, implemented it uh, into their frame, uh, uh, Versal, sorry, uh, implemented it into the Next.js with React team and they implemented it quite nicely. So, uh, quick agenda for today. Uh, I will quickly introduce <coughs> you to Next.js for those of you who actually don't know much about it. Uh, maybe there will be some uh, useful information for those who actually use it on a day-to-day basis. Um, after that, we will talk about the actual uh, idea of backend frameworks because in my eyes, uh, Next.js uh, kind of leans towards the backend side more and more and uh, doesn't really care about the front end side as much as it was uh, before. Um, with that, we'll be ready to talk about actual Next.js, how it um, where, uh, should be placed now um, because uh, it's changing rapidly. Um, yeah. Uh, with, with that, uh, we will look into the actual code. I decided to show you in the, uh, to pull up some VS code. Uh, I prepared some um, some project to uh, give you some example. Um, the, this this part will be split into two parts. Actually, I will show you how it was done um, to this day to the app folder, so a pages directory for those who uh, are aware of Next.js. And I will I rewrote that into the actual app folder itself, so we, we will see how it actually behaves, how we can take advantage uh, advantage of those new stuff, and uh, how it actually changes um, the developing develop, developer experience. Sorry, um, we will uh, b between those points we will have some time to talk about some question questions that you may may have. And uh, after that, we will recap actual the uh, the actual presentation, and after that, we will be ready for the beer. <coughs> so, quick introduction to Next.js, maybe some recap recapitulation for those for those of you who uh, use it. Actually, I uh, printed some screenshot. Uh, it has one hundred thousand uh, stars. So it's rightfully called the React framework. It, uh, it is uh, being the maintained by Versal and many, many, many people around the world that uh, are uh, uh, willingly putting many hours into this open source project. And uh, as Matthew said, it's, uh, it was firstly um, put on GitHub uh, in, at the uh, year 2016. As it was mentioned before, uh, the big guy is Claire Marauch. He's the, also the CEO of Versal. Uh, and uh, he uh, have done many things in the open source space, mainly, uh, of course, Next.js. And I have placed also Socket.io as an example, or Mongoose for, um, uh, as an ORM for Mongo databases. Uh, yeah, that's about the actual uh, boring stuff and we will be diving into the more interesting stuff. Uh, Next.js is open-aided in its own way. Um, as you may know, React is not so much open-aided if we compare it maybe uh, with Angular that is really, really open-aided. So Next.js doesn't really care about their um, where you uh, uh, fetch your stuff such as on client or, or server, it doesn't really tell you that much, but it provides you with, with React as, as its uh, main point on, on the front end side. And it does provide you with some useful, useful tools to opti optimize your page. Uh, lately, it uh, 
do dive dove deeper into fonts. It provides you with uh, some nice integration with fonts. Um, it also provides you with some uh, its own uh, React component image uh, where uh, uh, underneath there's some logic for resizing, generating some uh, previews or stuff like that. And uh, yeah, the next point is SSR uh, is uh, the main point the, the actual uh, Next.js was, was introduced. But also it can do some SSG stuff. You can export your page into static files. Uh, maybe that will that is actually useful for someone, but I don't really recommend it. But uh, there's just one other um, uh, way to uh, manage your uh, your um, to generate your uh, site into if you want to le uh, leverage your static site uh, or st static uh, static generation you can you don't have to actually export your page into some uh, static files you can uh, leverage it uh, by um, generating your site to mm -hmm. static files uh, static uh, files and uh, in the runtime, you can uh, regenerate those files on the fly. So I think it's really, really nicely, nicely implemented there. Yeah, and other other ab abstractions. Next.js introduces other ex abstractions such as uh, red redirects, and it has middleware. This is uh, some special logic that lives on the uh, edge runtime for those. So who actually knows about edge runtime? Oh, just one! <laughs> wow. Well, uh, it's quite uh, so. It's quite new. Uh, also, Veracelka uh, introduced it. Um, it's uh, the main idea for it is um, to <laughs> speed, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it should be placed with, uh, uh, between client and uh, database to some regions, so uh, the responses are much faster in Edge, uh, if you just compare it, maybe you placed it in uh, your uh, server, whereas on the Edge, it's must much faster. Uh, yeah, uh, what about the uh, front uh, backend framework? Uh, what should we know about them or uh, uh, to quickly uh, uh, talk about them more? Uh, I try to find some uh, definitive definition for backend frameworks, but uh, uh, to my knowledge, there is none. But uh, we can talk. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we can talk uh, how we should uh, picture uh, backend frameworks. In my eyes, uh, backend frameworks should uh, provide you with useful tools to refine your routing, and uh, it should not really care about uh, your rendering and. Uh, it handles your request, provides you with tools uh, managing your headers, cookies, authentication, etc. And Next.js does it really, uh, really well. Um, and uh, especially with the new app folder stuff. Um, yeah, what about the backend? Uh, Next.js tries to lean toward <coughs> the backend side. Um, before it was more on the front end side, tried to do a lot of stuff on the front end side, but uh, yeah, sh uh, React should do this, um, not 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 uh, Next.js. And what about the developer developer experience? Uh, yeah, that's uh, hard to tell because uh, many projects require you require different uh, uh, different needs and different scopes, and Next.js is not uh, do it all. Uh, doesn't really um, if you need some complicated logic on the backend, maybe some data crunching, you need a lot of, lot of data, uh, JavaScript was not for that, and of course Next.js is not for that. Next.js is uh, for the backends that uh, need to render a lot of stuff, and they need to be maybe close to some other services, and you don't want those services being exposed, so uh, Next.js uh, plays into that really nicely. And I also included uh, a few examples. Uh, Express.js is, uh, is um, no question about it. It's the most popular framework. Happy.js, maybe some of you heard. Uh, who actually heard about Happy.js? Oh, nice. I, I, I like to see that. And what about the Nest.js? 
Really nice. Um, yeah, Next.js is uh, kind of uh, the same as Angular. Uh, it has uh, many opinionated um, ideas how you structure your backend, and uh, many folks uh, actually liked it, and uh, it's pretty pretty uh, useful. So, uh, what about the Next.js? Uh, where does Next.js belong in in this space? Um, as I said before, it really uh, should be placed between uh, the the front end side and the back end side. You can't really, uh, or uh, you should not expect expect it uh, to be it on the more on the back end side. As I said before, the performance is not there, but the developer experience is for sure for sure there. Uh, what about the idea of state, stateful and stateless? Uh, I put it here because Next.js doesn't really uh, have many tools to manage your stateful backend. Uh, uh, what stateful, stateful backend is? Uh, actually, does anybody uh, know about this uh, idea, stateful versus stateless backend? Maybe raise your hand. You don't have to actually talk about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not, not so talked about much, but uh, the stateful backend is when you uh, maybe have some API call, uh, API route where uh, the maybe for registration and you uh, don't have to, uh, or you don't really want user to wait for sending uh, mail being sent and stuff like that. So you do uh, stuff in the background by schedule or, or something like that. So we have some state on the backend, actual backend, and Next.js doesn't really have tools for that. It's just stateless backend. Uh, you, uh, <coughs> the request comes and the uh, uh, response uh, goes. So input, output, simple, simple, simple logic. And Next.js, uh, of course, uh, has uh, first-class support for edge runtime. As I said before, uh, edge runtime is, uh, uh, brings a lot more speed to your responses from your server side. And um, yeah, uh, two subparts. I, uh, as I said before, I will be splitting next few, uh, I will be sp splitting the next few uh, moments into two subparts. How it was before uh, the app folder actual and how it uh, looks right now in the app folder itself. Uh, yeah, I should mention it's not really uh, production ready, but uh, folks at Versal said that it's really closing beta, so uh, why not talk about it now? Uh, yeah, we are ready for some code. Uh, yeah. Let me quickly switch into the shell branch. I've prepared here. Yeah, uh, th these files, config files, you don't have to actually look at them. They're not important to my, to my uh, point uh, because um, these config files come from uh, the actual uh, boilerplate that Next.js has. Uh, some public folder for managing your public files. Uh, yeah. And the magic actually happens in source directory. Uh, and I will give you a question. Do I have to uh, put those files in source directory or uh, uh, should I? Uh, who actually put those uh, files in the source di directory? Um, uh, sorry, uh, bad question. <laughs> I'm quite n nervous as you can see. Uh, uh, next chance is to, to um, Two ways to define your your files uh, that the Next.js uh, searches, and you can put them in your source folder, or you can put them in the actual root folder of your project. Uh, yeah, that's just the information. I, I won't ask you <laughs> any question. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look on uh, what's in the actual source. Folder, I include some components, so that's where your usual components live, some buttons, inputs, etc. Some styles, uh, there's just global styles, uh, some types, utils, nothing complicated there. But uh, we will talk about the actual routing. Uh, uh, when uh, you, uh, you define your routes in your uh, pages directory and uh, uh, the actual uh, generated route uh, copy the actual 
folder structure that you define in your pages, pages directory. So for example, if you want to define your main page, you just create your pages folder and you define your index.tsx, that will be your main page. You can actually open it and look at what's, what's in here. Um, in your pages directory, you define your, uh, you define your, uh, 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 in your page file, um, I should say, you define your component uh, component and you export it, uh, export it as default uh, from that file and Next.js catches it and uh, takes it as a, as a page, uh, page component. Actually, uh, Next.js provides you with uh, some useful uh, way to uh, define your metadata in head, head uh, element uh, such as title, and this is the most used one. Um, and you can define whatever, uh, whatever you want to, that you would usually define your, in your head, head element in HTML. Um, yeah, uh, let's quickly breeze onto the actual uh, special files that are not so obvious. Um, underscore app, uh, here you can define your layout that will be uh, used on every page. And this this uh, layout won't be uh, like uh, um, it will have it, its own stain, but but it won't be um, if you uh, toggle between pages, you the, the actual state won't be lose uh, lost. And again, you can define your head uh, head metadata here, and the actual page component will be passed as as, uh, as props. Actual, I, I actually used uh, fprops type from Next.js itself. Uh, yeah, uh, next up there's some special file underscore document. Uh, here you can uh, define your uh, actual HTML structure from head to head to toe. Um, but uh, Next.js uh, this, the, um, does this in, um, in my opinion, ugly way. It uh, provides you with uh, its own uh, its own React components, HTML head, by, uh, main, and next script. Uh, in my opinion, it should not be uh, like actually in here, but uh, yeah, it's whatever. Uh, yeah, and actually that's for the the pages. Uh, uh, we will look at the actual example I have prepared. I d decided to um, uh, have an app that shows a list of beers that you can look, uh, look at. And yeah, um, when you uh, have a trip to Prague, you actually need some uh, useful list of, of beers that you can actually drink. So uh, that may be a good exa example. So to define your su sub, sub page, uh, for example, you need to have some your beers page. You define your uh, file with the name beers.tsx, or as I have here, Peers and index.tsx um, and subroutes, uh, you can just deeply nest it, uh, it's whatever. Um, and uh, Next.js has its own way of defining the dynamic routes. Uh, dynamic routes are like you can catch the actual para parameter that is, uh, or the path segment, and you, have, uh, you can have some underlying logic there. Uh, yeah, actually you can look at the beers page, what I have in here. Um, yeah, the actual beers page have some content in it. And we can actually look that I have passed some uh, prop into this page and this prop is being generated on a server. But uh, there's uh, like two or three ways to uh, define those para, uh, props on server. Uh, the get select props and get server side props and uh, uh, before it was get initial props. Uh, get initial props is being run on uh, both client on, and the server. And get server side props is actually being run on the, uh, only on the server side as well as get static props. Um, and uh, useful, you also think about these get static props and get server side props, the actual logic won't be included in uh, your JavaScript bundle uh, that will be sent to the client. So you, you can just contact your database there, um, have, your, have your special logic, maybe uh, you have some authentication logic there and, and et cetera. Again, had some head elements here, uh, some list. Yeah, it's whatever, it's, it doesn't really matter. 
an example of Gitslytic props, uh, I should sh say what's the actual difference between Gitslytic props and Git server side props? Why do we have them uh, like separate? Because uh, Gitslytic props uh, will be actually executed on at the build time of the page, and uh, and uh, the actual Next.js itself. So uh, maybe this will be useful <coughs> some for some blog page that you would don't actually update uh, uh, update um, every day or uh, yeah. And uh, about the get server side props, this actual function will be executed on every request, uh, and the actual page will be uh, rendered rendered on server before the actual request uh, is being sent back to the client. So you can have your maybe um, some reviews there or or maybe a uh, good example would be Twitter where the interactions are in every second, every millisecond, so we have to uh, have the actual page being uh, up to date on every request. Uh, let's look and the example get server side props. Uh, it's sort of uh, the same as the get static, uh, get static props. Uh, we just export it from, from the actual page file. Um, yeah, I don't have actual time for deep diving into this, so uh, for those those of you who don't actually know about Next.js, I'm sorry, uh, I won't talk about it. But the actual documentation uh, from Next.js is pretty nice, so that will maybe better uh, than my talk. Uh, yeah, um, that's for the pages, and uh, Next.js uh, offers you a nice way to define your API routes. API routes, Next.js uh, gets it as um, uh, API routes are, are kind of special because they, uh, the actual response won't be React component or HTML, but uh, the JSON or, or uh, just plain HTML, uh, no, no special React logic there. So the actual uh, logic, you can define it like this. Uh, with your handler, it will be, again, uh, exported as default from, from that uh, page file. And Next.js provides you uh, mm -hmm. into this function with two parameters, request, it's uh, self-explanatory, as well as response. And uh, for those of you who actually use Express.js, this is pretty pretty much the same. You end your request with end function or end method. Uh, you you'll get your cookies there in request, uh, as well as uh, query. Uh, nothing, nothing really complicated in my eyes. Uh, I have also uh, mentioned revalidate here, and that's, that's for the SS ISR stuff. When you want uh, have your static page uh, generated, and you need this page being regenerated, maybe on some periodic, periodic revalidation, or maybe um, you, uh, your um, maybe a CMS or some some uh, other systems need uh, have updated some stuff, and this page needs to be updated as well. Uh, you have your API endpoint defined here, and in that API endpoint, you call your revalidate, and th that page will be uh, revalidated. Yeah, um, I quickly br breeze through it. So, if we have time for some questions, uh, do you need some uh, something <coughs> more uh, to from me to talk about this this pages directory or? Uh, you are all sleeping, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty boring right now, yeah. How this would change if you use GraphQL? Uh, how this would actually change? Yeah, it's pretty interesting because uh, you actually need uh, this, uh, the actual data on server side. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, it's getting complicated if you include the GraphQL because you need uh, this GraphQL being called in that get server side props. Uh, and uh, you need to populate those data from server into the actual client side. And that's actually quite tricky because you need to pass those properties somehow. And uh, actually managing it uh, at large scale it, it, it would be uh, rather complicated. Actually, has someone made some uh, Next.js app with GraphQL? Graphql is quite popular, so I would expect that 
Yeah, I don't like GraphQL either if you don't like yeah. GraphQL. <laughs> <laughs> I think GraphQL is mostly used for like communication of a server as I'm showing it and not much monolithic next to it. I mean, it seems to me like yeah, actually, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. In my eyes, you are you are right because the GraphQL is um, kind of heavy, heavy technology that uh, was kind of overused in recent years, uh, and I would actually see it as a uh, communication between server and server, not, not the actual client, but um, uh, the usage. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to have some uh, say something, uh, I yeah. think it's it's definitely for server to client communication or server server because it defines the contract the schema which we agreed upon server and client and server and server doesn't mean like you, know, you can use uh, another protocol like RPC or something like that if you yeah or uh, HTTP if you yeah no we, yeah if we strip down some elements uh, from GraphQL we actually don't really need a GraphQL at all we can have uh, our API routes defined with uh, Maybe some validation of Zot and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and do you need to, to say something more or? Uh, well, uh, yeah. If you're uh, using Next for static generation, then that would be a scenario where GraphQL would apply if you have if you are using Get static. Actually, yeah, yeah, uh, because. Like SD or some but other would, you, would you use it in these like uh, static uh, props or? Static methods, props. Like yeah. these in these methods. Oh. Yeah, in getting static props. Yes, not in this IP address. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, in get like props. You would actually use it in here. And actually, get, it's a good idea to uh, do this calculation here because um, in, uh, in my, um, um, when I work with GraphQL, uh, usually those requests are uh, like, um, it takes, uh, for them to finish, it takes a long time. So actually, it's a, a good idea to put it in here because uh, get static props, as I said, uh, is being called only on the actual page build and not on every request. So yeah, uh, we usually did it in uh, maybe main page where uh, on some e-shops uh, where the uh, products are not um, are not uh, <coughs> updated uh, so, so such a, on a regular basis. And many Yeah, yeah. yeah. Way, way. <laughs> but just yeah, so, so you can. Hey, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's focus on the. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. good idea to focus on. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think question time is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Spoilers, don't look at it. Don't look at it, please. So uh, we had demo, we had also QA. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I will uh, talk now about the app folder itself. We have talked about the pages at, uh, folder itself. Let me quickly look at it, how it actually uh, was and is being done right now. But uh, with the app folder, the file structure kind of uh, changes a whole, a whole lot. The actual paradigm shifts and the um, the routing uh, change, changes whole a lot. Um, I will quickly uh, remind you of server components and streaming, and uh, I will talk about the new file conventions that uh, Next.js introduce, introduced. Um, page layout, uh, route, this is just some files. Uh, that it will make sense in, in a minute. Um, about these server components, uh, they were made in, in my eyes for uh, uh, making the actual bundle that is being sent to the client smaller because some apps don't actually need to have uh, the uh, use state logic and uh, some state state uh, being, um, because maybe block page doesn't really have any state. Uh, so yeah. Um, and the actual propagation of, of uh, some changes, maybe uh, when you uh, want to um, go from page to page. Uh, before on, uh, in the server side uh, world, the actual client would need to reload the page or the page would be reloaded and all the stuff will be uh, downloaded again. But in, in this case, uh, React and Next.js did it in uh, quite a nice way 
when you maybe some part of the page or, or DUI changes with maybe page transition or or some maybe uh, uh, some did, uh, maybe calculator or something like that, uh, the actual change uh, will be sent from server with just some JSON blob, and uh, React will uh, replace or re-render some uh, parts of the page with the uh, just small information that the server uh, sent to the client. Yeah, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, the idea of streaming. When uh, something changes on server, server sen uh, sends just the part of the information that actually changed, and uh, it doesn't really <coughs> need to uh, download the whole HTML page again. And maybe who used actually the inertia JS? Uh, it's not, yeah, it's not popular popular at all. Uh, it was uh, kind of small, small project that um, uh, introduced this kind of idea that uh, was uh, working nicely with Laravel in PHP. The actual page um, changes and the actual uh, small part of the HTML will be sent from server. Uh, yeah, some of folks uh, are going home and it's getting quite um, interesting right now, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about the actual new file um, file ideas that Node.js uh, introduced. It's layout.js, template.js, uh, all, all of those as, as you can see. And uh, on the right side, it kind of represents what the actual, uh, how it Node.js will actually uh, build the uh, actual uh, React hierarchy. Uh, it will put a layout on the actual uh, top side template on the uh, underneath it, arrow boundary around the actual page and the suspense. Suspense will be underneath it, error boundary, first error boundary that's f that comes from the error.js uh, file. Uh, the actual suspense come from, comes from loading.js. Uh, error boundary uh, comes from the second one uh, uh, underneath uh, page, comes from uh, the not found.js and actual page, come, page content comes from page.js. Uh, it will make sense in a minute, but uh, uh, if you use actual React, you, this uh, really makes sense. And uh, this is quite a nice representation how it actually uh, works. Uh, the actual, uh, if you transition from, uh, in, in this case, from settings page to analytics page, page the actual uh, content of the page will be changed, uh, just just the part of it, not not the actual whole page like we had before, um, and that's uh, kind of the idea of uh, of uh, the actual uh, structure of um, islands that maybe Astro introduced, but in different light. And yeah, this is uh, next uh, some different uh, explanation on uh, how the uh, Next.js logic uh, swaps, to swaps those uh, 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 logic between page, page transitions. Um, maybe this was a hard explanation from me, but if you have some question, you maybe can raise your hand or just speak loudly. Yes? So what happens if some components are shared like inside? So, so what, so, so the part in the middle maybe, maybe like need, need yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, maybe uh, you are getting in the uh, right way. Yeah. The actual top, uh, the actual in the uh, blue blue side, the uh, that 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 won't change between the page render because it's defined less as a top layout, but uh, the actual um, the purple stuff will be changed and uh, the state will be lost if that's if that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, again, demo time, yay. <laughs> uh, let's look at the app folder itself. I switched branches. Yeah, uh, this looks uh, kind of the same. I have source folder again with some styles, types, it does. Uh, it's pretty much the same as it was before. Uh, with the addition of a folder and the pages directory is no more. 
Um, let's look at it, uh, how I defined it. Uh, the actual main page it can be defined uh, if you, previously you need to define your fo uh, pages folder and your index.tsx would be there. Uh, but right now, the, uh, your main page uh, will be defined uh, with the creation of a folder itself and you need to create your page, uh, page.tsx there. Um, yeah, we can actually look into it, what, uh, what's, what's in here. Uh, again, uh, greetings to uh, our moms and uh, some, some link that you, we uh, will need later on. I will show you actually, I will spin up the dev server and we will look actually how it behaves. Um, uh, again, uh, nothing uh, really changes here because we uh, define our React component here and export it as default. And previous.